Hello and welcome. I'm Kelly Dobbs Micus, an editor for Morningstar Music Publishers. I'm happy to be joined today by Marie Rubis Bauer from St. Cecilia Cathedral in the Archdiocese of Omaha, where she is the Cathedral Music Director and Organist, and also the Archdiocesan Music Director. Thank you for joining us today to talk about a new collection of organ pieces by Charles Callahan. Marie, since you commissioned the collection, why don't you introduce it for us? Hi, it's great to be with you today. And I'm really excited about the St. Cecilia organ book and happy to talk about it with you. So the idea for this actually is generated from the beautiful art that is already in St. Cecilia Cathedral, Omaha, Nebraska. And um, we are blessed to have a full set of Clare Story windows that are all based on the Latin hymns of the church. It's really been there from the beginning and we're happy about them and proud of them. And they teach and they link us very closely to music in the liturgy. So we commissioned this work to be done so that people could become more acquainted with the actual melodies that are in the windows and also a special gift for musicians in the Archdiocese of Omaha. This is to help people become closer to the windows and of course, closer to the cathedral itself. And of course, St. Cecilia is the patron saint of music. So there's also that connection. Yes, that's a, that's a very special thing that is here and uniquely here. St. Cecilia has such a wonderful history that uh, she's linked with music, but not only that, she's linked with harmony with God. So we really like to share music, but also the depth of music and the depth of her faith. So how did the idea for this collection come about and how did you settle on Charles Callahan for a composer? So Charles Callahan was selected, of course, for his connection to the organ and for his collection of music for manuals only so that this could be accessible to a lot of people, not only organists, for, but people who would want to play this on the piano. His skill and craft and his lifelong commitment to Gregorian chant also had a lot to do with it because all the windows are Gregorian chant. So he was a natural and I think he did such a beautiful job. Right, he is really, um, th those collections are very helpful to people, the uh, manuals only collections. Um, they're, the music really is always very satisfying. It's, it's simple, but it's never simplistic. That's certainly true. And he has a good sense of harmony, of creativity, in especially short forms. So this seemed like a very usable and um, a very natural thing for us to commission this. The pieces are based on windows which actually have a trajectory through the liturgical year. So they're very, very functional. It starts with the Magnificat, which of course is um, usable for evening services, anything Marian. Um, but also Advent and going through the year, Gloria in Excelsis Deo, Stabat Mater for, uh, for Lent, Victime Pascali Laudes, the Easter sequence, and Veni Sancti Spiritus, which is for Pentecost, Pange Lingua, which is Eucharistic, Dies Irae, which has been associated with the Mass for the Dead, and finally, Tedeum Laudamus. So it's a vast variety of chants, but all really familiar chants and all the important ones of the church year. I think one of the reasons that um, Charles Callahan likes to write these um, simpler pieces is because that he knows that there are many organists that really don't have much time to practice and he wants to provide quality music for those people. Um, one of the things he uh, is encouraged me about uh, was to talk about how it's very good for an organist uh, to take 
a very careful uh, listen to their instrument. So he mentioned taking each stop and, and playing through it from top to bottom so that you really understand and can hear where that particular stop sounds really lovely and maybe where it doesn't sound as clear, etc. And um, to base your choices, your registration choices on those types of things. So that was a, a, an interesting part of our conversation. I would agree with that and, and say that this is a fabulous collection to be doing exactly that. For me, it's also a wonderful teaching collection because I can share with musicians how to use their organs, how to register, how to get nuance in small forms. And so it's been really wonderful. And those very same musicians are, of course, musicians from the archdiocese, and they can have a special connection with the cathedral and the cathedral organ that you see behind me here. So why don't we listen to one of the pieces here for a little bit, and it's called Antiphon for St. Cecilia's Day. So when I talked to Charlie, he told me uh, about a little registration tip for this particular piece, the Antiphon for St. Cecilia's Day. He mentioned using a very simple combination of eight and four flutes for the first part at the beginning, and then for the repeat, change the eight foot stop to a, uh, a string stop instead of the flute. A very simple change. You know, he really thinks that less is more in terms of registrations, but a change that will add uh, some variety to the piece. So why don't you tell us about the premiere? So we premiered this in the summer of uh, 2021. This was at the close of pandemic protocols, but during the pandemic itself, the organ and programming here played a big part in our ministry. I played several concerts under the title of Beauty and Hope. So the premiere of this happened in connection with a couple of other special things. The St. Vincent de Paul Society from our parish has a food pantry and the food pantry needed much more food in the pandemic. So every time I played a concert, there was the invitation to bring food. So this is now a beautiful habit for parishioners and guests to come when they hear music, they're also bringing something in service. We also had um, pictures, uh, very beautiful photographs of the windows. They're very high and they are large, but you can't get close enough to them to really see them. So we had photographic images um, on stands and people could walk around the cathedral and see the beautiful windows close up. The premiere was by myself and my colleague, Dr. Michael Emmerich who is also serving in the Archdiocese of Alma. So we played it together, we shared this. It's been really lovely to talk with you today, Marie, and I appreciate all the insights you have. And we're going to end today with uh, another piece from the collection, and this one is called Gloria Fanfares. 
Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.